Do you have a bunch of old tapes that you want to turn, convert into digital files, and then make into CDs for a variety of reasons? Well, I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm going to show you exactly what I did to be able to convert my old tapes into CDs. So I'm just chilling in my recording studio and I'm going to show you what you need to do the project. So one of the most important things that you're going to need is a way to convert the RCA out from the tape player to digital. This Behringer UCA222, which is actually really hard to find right now, and I got this one on Reverb used in mint condition, is the first step. You need to have one of these to convert to digital. You're going to have to have a really nice tape deck that has RCA out that you can plug into the Behringer. I got this Onkyo TAW202 in really good condition from a music store in Hyannis, and I got kind of lucky finding it, and I think it was only 100 bucks. They're actually surprisingly hard to find in really good condition, uh, high quality Japanese product. You're going to need to have a CD burner. So this Rufol is actually not very expensive. I'm not a huge fan of their, this is kind of nice. It has a yeah, two way, it's got a USB 3 and then a C split, but it's kind of awkward. Either way, this one's worked great. Rufol, you can find them all over the place, not too expensive. You're going to have to have obviously an RCA cable. This also does video. You just don't use it. You use the red and the white for left and right. You're going to need CDs and jewel cases. You can get these in bulk, not too expensive. You're going to need a computer. And I use Audacity, even though I have Pro Tools in the studio. Audacity is really good to use, in my opinion, for really simple projects. And I'll show you how it all works. And the most important part is you have to have some cool old tapes. I actually just bought these next door at this place called Instant Karma in Orleans, which is a great little record and tape and 8-track shop. Dylan does a great job. So I'm going to do Doobie Brothers for this one. Uh, but I'm gonna do all three of them eventually Here's a little quick video from the inside of instant karma. Awesome. Okay, so let's talk signal chain our favorite thing So I other videos people have always really liked when I do this going through the simplistic signal chain So you've got your output line out from the tape player left and right white and red coming out of the back now you're gonna put that line out from the tape deck left and right into the input of the Behringer UCA222. Keep in mind there is a volume control on the Behringer. I have turned it to about three quarters of the way up. Out of the Behringer, you're gonna have your USB. This will be recognized. It doesn't need any firmware or anything. Then you're gonna plug in your Rufol CD burner into the computer. You can hear it kind of working away. It's automatically, again, recognized by the computer, doesn't need any firmware. Obviously gonna have to download Audacity, which is a free audio editing software. Um, what I did is when I first added the Behringer, I actually added it as a device on the computer and named it. Um, so when you go to audio setup, you go to Behringer tape, USB audio. So now that is the input for the system when I go to record. Now I'm just gonna turn on the Onkyo and hit eject then you're gonna have the tape facing side one right and you drop that in and you're gonna to want to rewind it because you don't know exactly where it was at so i'm going to rewind it to the start so we are now ready what i always do is i start the recording first so hit the red record button up top and now it's armed if you will and now i'm going to start sending the signal i'm going to hit play and you'll know if this is working because you're going to start seeing the waveform. That's just the fuzz of the tape. Okay, there comes the track. So you can see that the levels are coming in. They're not going, they're not clipping, they're not hitting zero. They're hitting about minus six dB. So that's about where you want it for most recordings. You can edit the total volume of the track afterwards uh, by using these this plus minus on the top there of effects. Uh, there's a lot of effects that you can add in Audacity, but I'm just gonna use that as the master volume control at the end. But since this is a produced tape, honestly, this is coming through really clean. I'm not gonna probably adjust the volume at all uh, when I go to burn these. Standard tape is usually 60 to 90 minutes uh, total. So 30 minutes aside or 45 minutes aside. Uh, I typically see more 30 minutes on a side. So I'll see, you know, what's my total time. I might set a timer for myself uh, for 28 minutes from now uh, to come back and flip the tape. I don't stop the recording though, I'll just have it as one large file and then I'm gonna show you how I turn these into tracks afterwards by uh, basically splitting up the original file into multiple clips, then saving those as individual clips as little mp3s 
and then I'll put them into Windows Media Player to burn it, which is wild because I used that in the 90s and it still works. Okay, so side one just clicked. All done, no more WAV file. Just gonna flip this right around and hit play. Because that means that it's automatically, for some of the younger Gen Z folks, the other side will now start right at the beginning. And we'll again see sort of where the levels are at. I'd be shocked if they're not at the same level, uh, which is mastered and probably perfect. You can see these are clearly stereo files, which is what you want. So you can see that the waveform for the left and right is different, which is good. So if you're listening to music on a nice system, you're going to be able to get what the musicians initially intended. Okay, made it through side two. Tape's about to stop playing on its own. But now let's get into cutting it up. So I'll tell you a few of the quick keys. And I'm on a PC. I actually prefer PC, although I use a Mac as well. But on PC, Control-1 zooms in. And then control three zooms out. So let's see our total body of work here. As you're zooming out, control three, control three. Okay, so there we go. So we're at a total of about 45 minutes or so when you trim it all down. So let's get into actually trimming up the track. So this was the Doobie Brothers best of the Doobies, right? So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna save this project in Audacity so I don't lose that recording. So I'm gonna save project as, and I've already got a save folder for other projects that I have done called tape recordings. But I'm going to create a folder in there and I'm going to save this as Doobie Brothers. Save this file as Doobie Brothers Best of the Doobies. Okay, so now we can start cutting this up. We do have our track list and everything. If you wanted to, you can put the titles of these. I'm not going to do that, but you can do that, especially because you're going to be digitizing these and you can share them uh, with um, yourself, no one else. <laughs> So I'm just gonna hit enter, which gets us to the, the head of the track there. I'm not gonna allow this to play uh, much of the audio because I don't want to get a copyright strike, but you just do wanna just kinda gut check this on your computer and see if the sound is good. Okay, so the track's going. I've got good levels on it. I'm not over minus six dBs. It's not really clipping or anything like that. So we're looking pretty good on this. So I'm gonna start trimming these up. I'm gonna zoom in to the beginning of that track, okay? I want to get right at the beginning of the waveform. I'm going to move the cursor right ahead of that. So now we're right at the beginning of the track and I'm going to hit control I. That will splice that into its own section. Now you need to go to the end of the track and do the same thing. I'm going to get to the end of the waveform so I'm just going to play through the end of the song, hit spacebar. All right, it fades out to about here. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to hit control I and now we have our little spliced segment. If you wanted to name this, you can. I'm just gonna leave the default names for this. But now, if you zoom out, you can see that only this section is, high, is highlighted, right? So that's the part that I wanna turn into a little MP3, not the remainder. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to File, and then you're gonna go to Export Audio. It'll pop up this window. I'm just gonna name this number one. I'm not gonna put in the actual track names because I'm being lazy. Then you want to say where it's going to go. It's going to default to where I already set it up, but you go to browse and then you can choose the folder that you want it to go to. You're going to make sure it saves as um, number one in that folder. So that's where it's going to send to Doobie Brothers Best Of. I'm actually going to do these as MP3s. Like I said, just everybody knows how to use an MP3. Uh, stereo sound, you can set your sample rate and all that, but uh, the main key area is you can do the entire project, which will pull in everything, but I just want the current selection, that highlighted clip. That's what I want as my uh, MP3. So I hit export, and it's going to export it as an MP3. So then I just want to go into my folder, make sure that we're looking good on it, pull up the track and play it and see if it plays through okay. And yeah, it's playing through. There's our song. I'm not going to let it play because I'll get a copyright strike, but it's there and it sounds good. Uh, one other quick note is that to speed up that process, rather than clicking on file, you can do control shift E and that will pull up your saves, uh, your save file uh, location. So you can just quick key that control shift E right there, ready to go. Do that for the rest of these and then you're going to have your mp3 list. Next I'm going to show you once that's completed how to put those mp3s into Windows Media Player and burn a CD. Just a quick note, they're always going to leave gaps in these tapes between the songs 
because uh, some tape players would actually find that gap and, and then stop. So it would actually go to the next track in a way, in the old school way. So those gaps I'm going to cut out. So just leave those gaps out. That's where the next track is going to start. Control I. Okay, so there's all the tracks all spliced up. And you can see there's where the tape flips in the middle. you got to be kind of careful on these just to make sure if a song switches in between on a studio album that you're getting the next song if they're kind of really close in the waveform. So that's just one thing you got to be aware of. Then you're going to go to your folder, make sure you got everything where you want it. You got all 11 tracks. We're looking good there. So let's pull up Windows Media Player. So you can just search and find it, but it's a recent thing that I've used, so I'm going to pull it up. So here we go. We've got Windows Media Player, old school, legacy. It even says it in the title. There's play and then there's burn. Got all your tracks there. Using one hand, I can't do the shift click uh, move, so I'm just going to highlight all of them right now. Uh, rather than using quick keys, just make sure burn is highlighted on the top here and then just drop the files right into this folder area and it will bring them in. Now you're going to have your CD burners already set up. You're going to put in a blank CD and it's going to show up here and be ready. So putting in the new Freshy, we've got a blank CD, click in and you're going to hear it doing its thing for a second. The computer is going to read what's on that disk and it's going to say okay nothing's on it and it'll show you the amount of room that's available all right so right now it's saying that 3454 is free of 80 minutes so what it's calculating is that of the 80 minutes these tracks take up everything but 3454 so you could add more to this afterwards all that you have to do now is just click start burn it's just that easy so make sure your blank disk is highlighted there if you want to see what's happening Go to start burn and it'll bring in the tracks and it'll prepare them. I have it on a pretty slow burn speed which means that the quality is going to be higher. You can change your burner settings as depending on the burner that you have. Uh, but I have it on a pretty slow burn speed that will give us the best audio quality we can get. Uh, again, uh, CD is actually going to be a little less quality in theory than the tape. Um, but I only have a CD player in my car, so and I don't like streaming. I'd rather be on something that I physically have and uh, not use a streaming service whenever possible. Um, so again, this is for personal use. I'm not distributing these, so these are not for sale. These are for personal use. It's something I've already bought myself. You're not going to be able to pirate this and sell it. That is illegal. Okay, so this is for personal use. All right, so they're all pending, and the first one is now writing and you'll start to see the progress. There we go, 10%. It's relatively quick. So this being only a 50 minute or so, 45 minute uh, CD or total tape, it's probably gonna take you know six or seven minutes at a high burn quality to get the whole thing done. All right, and when it's all done, it conveniently pops out so you'll know that your CD's done burning. So there we go, you can see how much has been written on there if you look closely. Uh, you put it in your little jewel case, which you can get in bulk, like I said, and then you just want to put the name on it, right? So we got Doobie Brothers. So there you have it. So not only did I buy that music and I now technically own it, I can't resell it, but I own that music. I don't have to pay a subscription, but I also supported a local business by buying that $5.95 tape. I also now have those as digital mp3s that I can put into anything that I own to then listen to it on my own without ads or anything like that in the future. I also now have a CD that I can put in my car and listen to on the road and there's nobody that can stop me. Okay, so if you like this video, please like and subscribe. I think a lot of people are going to start doing this because people are getting pretty frustrated with not only the streaming service costs and the ads, but the quality is very low and people don't always know that. The quality of the audio files that they play on Spotify and elsewhere are very low quality degraded so that they can ship that music around digitally at a very low data cost. So those are low quality tracks that you're listening to on Spotify. This is a much higher quality track that you can listen to for your personal enjoyment. Again, please like and subscribe this video if it helped and I appreciate you watching. Thanks.